The ICU makes me nervous. Potential interest in trauma surgery. We had a patient code last week. I'm tired. Good morning. Tomorrow I start my surgical ICU rotation. I am trying not to freak out about it, but if I'm being honest, the ICU makes me all kinds of nervous. I think there are just so many things to learn. Critical care medicine is just, I feel like its own thing. I know it's grounded in like physiology and really a bunch of drugs. And it's like the core of medicine in some ways I know, but all those drugs, those pressers, the vent settings, everything about the ICU makes me nervous and also excited because I can see myself being an intensivist in the future and I actually do have a potential interest in trauma surgery it's sort of why I came into medicine to begin with so I am excited but I'm also nervous and it's just been such a long time since I've been sort of in this clinical setting I had my last sub eye on Z I don't know when, months ago. Not only will this be a challenging rotation in terms of content, but I think it will just be challenging to be back in the full swing of a hospital and around people again because I live alone. So I've been enjoying peace and solitude. Anyway, I was thinking about going to the school gym, which I haven't done. I hope it's pretty empty because it's 9 a.m. People who would have gone earlier would have gone already. Do I want to wear shorts or sweats? I did a bad thing yesterday and I picked my face and now I just have this sort of inflamed red spot on my nose. Which like, Melody, why did you do that? It's unclear. I'm tired. There you go. Baby, tá gostosa a mi lado. Sabrosa y tan dulce como un mango. Una chica de Bahía con mi lado. Good morning. It's my first day in the surgical ICU and I am scrambling to get ready. How are you guys? Fine? Great. Let me find my coffee. One second. So today's my first day of my ICU rotation. Should I tuck this in? I'm going to be spending two weeks in the surgical ICU and then two weeks in the cardiothoracic ICU. It's going to be a wild ride since I know very little, absolutely nothing about both of those things. I'm spending my first two weeks in the surgical ICU and I'm excited for the rotation but it definitely seems like it's gonna be a lot or not a lot just like more more than I've been doing recently they've already let us know that we we have one day of overnight call a week so that's gonna be a 24 or 28 hour shift I guess where we come in at our usual time in the morning and we stay until the next day after sign out which I think sign out usually happens around 7 a.m. only while we're in the surgical ICU which means I have two 24 hour calls and that'll be the first 24s I've ever done somehow I managed to not do any 24s when I was on my visiting way rotations and all that stuff Oh, too much crying. I can't multitask, one second. Good morning. Day two of SICU today. The first day ended up being very, very chill, except there are a couple of things I wasn't expecting. Rounds took four and a half hours, and because I'm so used to surgery rounds, I was not expecting that. So they took about four and a half hours. We are caring for really, really sick patients, so it makes sense, but my back and my legs, my feet, I was like, oh my God, mostly my back. The big kicker, I lost my access to the, the electronic medical record. So I guess my school does this thing where if you haven't been active in supposedly six months, they delete your account or deactivate your account. And sometimes you have to like call someone to activate it again. So I got to my rotation yesterday. They wanted us all to, you know, pick up patients and I had no way of going through patient charts and reading up on them, etc. I still have no way of doing that. So I'm a little bit nervous because on day two, they usually expect you to get into the flow of things, carry a patient, present a patient on rounds, but I quite literally cannot even access patient information right now. One thing that med school has definitely taught me is that there are a lot of sort of inefficiencies in the hospital system and it's just whatever. We'll see. It's about 6.15 a.m. I was told to come in sometime between 6 and 7. That's a huge range, so I think I'm going to head in in probably 10 or 15 minutes and meet them somewhere in the middle, although I'm not sure what they're going to expect me to do. I came home yesterday and did a workout, and that was good. I did get out early, so to be fair, I got out around 3 or 4. I was like on the fence about whether or not I should exercise, but the plan was to exercise yesterday, so I did a 30-minute spin ride instead of 45 minutes. I really love the 30-minute ones. They're like a reason 
reasonable length. You can really work up a good sweat. So I did a 30 minute hip hop ride with Alex you saw on the One Peloton app. Peloton, I would love to be sponsored by them. Everyone email Peloton and tell them to sponsor me immediately. <laughs> And I think I just like was feeling it. So I went harder than I have in a long time. Like I really went for it. And I use an outside bike. Like I don't have a Peloton bike. I want one and I should probably get one. But I use an outside bike. The outside bike is great. It's great. My problem is I'm super tall. I'm six feet tall, but I have my legs are longer than my torso. So I think I have the legs of like a 6'3 person in terms of like my hip height. And the bike is not made for people who are that tall. If you are under, then you should be totally fine with like normal proportions, but if you have really, really long legs, like I think I have a 34 inch inseam, then it makes it, you know, a little bit less ideal. What I'm saying is that the challenge of using an outside bike, I think they work great, but one of the challenges is that you can't turn up the power or resistance the way the instructor instructs you to do so. So I'm always guessing what is 40, what is 45, what is 50 resistance. And yesterday I was probably feeling myself. So I think I cranked it higher than usual for those like ranges. And when I tell you at the end of the 30 minutes, I was borderline wheezing. Borderline wheezing? I kid you not. So there's that. Oh, Pons wants to say good morning. Pons! Pod, say good morning. She's not having it. Another exciting piece of information is that yesterday on February 1st, I got the email that rank lists have opened. And so I can officially submit my rank list if I want, although I'm nowhere near there yet. But I can officially start submitting my rank list and I got so much anxiety from it. I was like, oh my God, I cannot think about this right now. And then after I received that email, I got another email from one of the programs that I'm really interested in. It's probably in my top three, I would say right now. And it could very well end up being my number one. I got another email about this opportunity to revisit this program and see it in person. Prayers up that I get access to the electronic medical records sometime soon because this is absolutely unacceptable. How am I supposed to care for these patients? How am I supposed to do my job? I guess it's not, I don't know. Focusing on my learning. Right, Pons? Yep, just focusing on my learning. She is so cute. Okay, bye. Hello! So today was my fourth day on my ICU rotation and it's been a very chill rotation so far. Pond wants to say hi. So it's been a very... It's been a very, very chill rotation. I'm working with some awesome anesthesia interns. My chief is really cool. It's only my fourth day, but so far my first week has been a lot of fun. Definitely more learning than work, if that makes sense. Like sometimes in medical school, you're on these rotations where you're doing 60 or 70% sort of work, manual labor, often doing the tasks or helping out with tasks that don't really add a lot to your education necessarily, helping run things to the lab, et cetera, et cetera. But things that are helping to advance patient care, that definitely happens to a varying extent on different rotations. I would say this rotation in particular, there's like an increased learning to sort of work ratio, which is really nice because as a fourth year, all I want to do is learn. And this kind of environment is just like a perfect environment to do it. The interns don't want us carrying that many patients. They really just want us to sort of carry one, to practice presenting and to use it as a as a means of, of learning and to help out with that patient. But it's just really nice. It's like the perfect fourth year rotation so far. I actually had to get an x-ray for my own personal health stuff. So I went and did that. We had a patient code last week so I saw my team run a code and that was a really intense situation. I had seen a code being run before once actually in the OR once at the bedside and the patient unfortunately did not survive but in this case we ran a code and the patient's okay but it was also an experience that was really really helpful to see because I hadn't seen sort of a, anything like it before you know all hands were on deck the nurses were on top of it there was a lot of communication and even though there was a lot was going on it was all very organized it was like organized chaos and so that was something that I'm just really glad I had an opportunity to witness because I think as someone who will you know be running those codes one day as a resident it was just nice to see the expectation for how they should be run and to be on the outside looking in provides like a unique vantage point unfortunately I still have to do a lot of work on this scholarly project final project that I have to do for my school and I'm actually going out of town this weekend for a second look event I'm gonna change now so that I remain motivated motivated to work out later and then I'm gonna try to sit down at my desk and get a few hours of work done. Ah, oh, wish me luck.
What do y'all think? I've quite literally been blind, absolutely blind for the past couple of months. Not blind blind, but I'm nearsighted. I got these glasses, these same exact glasses a few years ago from Warby Parker. This is not sponsored, bought them myself. Probably been influenced by all of their great social media campaigns. But I got these exact same glasses a few, I think I was a first year med student. Somewhere between then and now lost them and went about a year or maybe more without any glasses because I don't really need them when I'm working up close, but when things are far away, yeah, like wow. I think I'm like negative one, negative 0.75 or something. You don't realize how affected your sight is until you put on glasses and then you're seeing an HD. And I feel like I can see the details of things. I was just missing out on so much. So anyway, I got these, just got home from the ICU. It was a little bit of a longer day. I've been on this rotation for about a week. I learned or relearned things that I definitely learned while I was on my other rotations, but have come to appreciate again. Things like the importance of communicating with nurses when there are orders that need to be done, taken care of immediately. And anyway, I made this whole video talking about what I've learned or relearned during my first couple of days in the SICU. And the biggest thing has been, wow, I really have not yet learned to fully appreciate how sick someone is. Sick patients will appear well to the untrained eye and it's no different in the ICU. And so I'm finding myself having to remind myself that this patient is in the ICU because they require the highest level of care. And it's so crazy to me that I can literally be talking to someone, having a conversation with someone and they can appear again, so, so okay and so well, and yet they're super, super sick. So anyway, maybe I'll talk about that more in my next video, but that has probably been the single lesson I've learned this week between having patients be okay one minute and bleeding the next, or be okay one minute and then, you know, they go into cardiac arrest. When you don't know a lot, when you're early in your training, you don't know what you don't know. And I'm just in shock that even now as a fourth year med student, I have learned so much. I definitely know so much more than I did as a first year, but I still have such a long way to go and it's humbling. Medicine will humble you that way because it's a, a field you're constantly learning in. So if you're thinking about being a doctor, you should know that you've gotta love learning because things are rapidly changing. You will always be learning and medicine and the human body and all things will always find a way to humble you. I guess no matter what field you're in, anyway. Wish me luck on my last three weeks. I'll keep you posted. This rotation might make an intensivist out of me yet. Talk to you soon.